Hey everyone, this is Kayla at Becky's Graphic Design in Nashville, Tennessee. Today we're going to discuss fixed format ebooks, um, specifically for children's books, and what is the best option for creating a book that is visually identical to your print version of the book, um, and how to make a fixed format EPUB that is distributable worldwide and not limited to just Amazon. So to get started, I have our example document here. You can see this is a beautifully laid out, beautiful, beautifully illustrated book. As y'all probably know, if I go to File, Export, and let's go ahead and export this book as a fixed layout directly from InDesign, we will tell it to do enable synthetic spreads. In order to try to keep the file size down, we're going to do 150 PPI. Um, and we're not going to worry about anything else for now. So let's click OK. And just see what we get by default straight into a, uh, a fixed format EPUB from InDesign directly. When we open this fixed format EPUB in Kindle Previewer 3, Let's see what we get. As you can see, this is taking quite a while to convert into large file. And this is with me dropping it down to 150 PPI. So now we can start scrolling through and seeing some of the little problematic issues that are gonna crop up when we do this. For example, we can see we've got some odd spacing with our words here. Now, in my print version of the book, these have a special character style applied to them. However, in ebook form, that character style probably doesn't exist. Uh, there's probably not a character style for um, all caps. So it's just doing the orange and it's just doing bold, but it's not doing the all caps part. Let's keep flipping through here. This will be especially noticeable if you are using a colored background. Uh, Let's see if we can find any pages. Oh, did you miss that one there? Look at this. Why is this covered up? Now, that is because this image is being generated by a text frame that sits overlapping with the text. Again, we can see the recurring issues, and this goes on and on throughout the whole book. I mean, for the most part, it looks okay, but there are a few issues. Uh, and this book actually has turned out pretty good as far as they usually go. Oftentimes, I see worse issues than this one. So what's our other option? Our other option is we can take the PDF edition of this book and we can upload the PDF, the print PDF, into Kindle Create, which will then spit out a KPF version of the file. Kindle Create has a few different options. We can choose from the comic book preset, uh, the kids book preset, or print replica. Um, obviously, we would like to use the children's book for a children's book, of course. However, if you have a lot of text, you are going to have to use print replica because this version does not rasterize the text. This version will rasterize your text as will comic book and it will throw an error if you have too much text that has been rasterized it will ask you to instead use the print replica. So this leaves us in a conundrum. Either one, we can upload a PDF of our children's book into Kindle Create. We can then spit out that KPF file. It's going to visually look good. However, the distribution will be limited to Amazon. You will not be able to upload that KPF file anywhere else. On the other hand, we could export our fixed format EPUB directly from InDesign, but then we're going to end up with some of these strange text issues and possibly other issues like the overlapping, the white boxes, the, the typical issues you see with a fixed format book. How do we get the best of both worlds when it comes to a fixed format children's book? What are the important things you're looking for? Number one, you want to enable these two page spreads, right? Two, we want to maintain an exact visual replication of the print book in the EPUB. And three, 
We want that worldwide distribution, right? We want to be able to upload this file anywhere across the internet and not be limited to just Amazon. So let me show you what I do whenever I need to convert my children's book into a fixed format EPUB that is visually identical to the print version. Let's hop back over to Enzyme. What we're going to do essentially is rasterize this whole entire book by exporting each of the pages as a JPEG. To start, we're gonna to go to File, Export, and we are going to export as a JPEG. Now I'm going to create a new folder. Here I'm going to make a JPEG folder specifically for this. I'm also gonna modify the name of this file. I want it to simply say page. Uh, when I click export JPEG, we are now going to ask Anazai to export all of the JPEGs, all of the pages as JPEGs, I should say, not spreads, pages. Um, also, we are going to reduce the resolution of these images just a little bit. We're going to drop it from 300 down to 240. These files can become very large. And if your EPUB file is too big, your customer is going to have to pay a higher delivery fee in order to receive that product online. Uh, just because the download size is bigger for the distributor's servers. This all looks good. I am going to add an incremental number for, I will do an incremental page number here. So I want to increment, as you can see, the file name and then the number of the page. This is just organizational. Next, we're going to click export and we're going to let InDesign do its thing. Now we can see we have the whole entire book, one after the other, um, as JPEG images. Now, how do we make these into a sequence that is understandable in an EPUB format? So let's go back again to our original print document. Now, make sure you're not modifying this print document. You want this to maintain its original form. We're making all new files for this fixed format EPUB. Um, let's use our page tool. We're going to double check our page size. So not counting bleeds. We don't need to worry about bleeds. We can see that the page size of this book is eight by 10. That's really all the information we need to know. Next, we're gonna to go to File, New, Document, and we're going to do an eight by 10. Yes, yes, that all looks good. We don't need to worry about the bleed. And let's give this a name. Very good. Now, on our parent pages, we're gonna go over here and we're going to generate a rectangle frame that, or a graphics frame. I'm going to simply click to type a custom dimension in here. I'm going to type eight by 10 to make sure it is perfect. Now you can see I've got my frame. I'm going to make sure this is lined up perfectly on this page. Now I'm going to duplicate that frame and make sure I've got one on this page and one on this page. This is the parent spread. Now when we flip back, to our main pages over here, we can see this graphics frame is holding its place as it should be. Let's go back to our print document. We can see that we have 40 pages. So I need to insert 39 more pages over here. And next we are going to simply place all of our JPEGs. Now, if you need a little bit of fine tuning done to these, don't forget you have frame fitting options. Back on our parent page, you can highlight these graphics frames. You can use your fitting options. And we can, for example, ask the frames to fill proportionally, fit proportionally. Uh, I'm just gonna use fill frame proportionally, although these should fit precisely and perfectly. Back on our primary pages, Next, we are going to go to File, Place, and we are going to load in each and every one of those JPEGs. I'm going to simply start on page one, go to page 40, shift click to select them all in order. And now all we need to do is let these images load into the cursor. Now I can simply click, 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 and so on and so forth until we reach the end. Mm -hmm. Now, depending on how you named your JPEGs, these may or may not come in in the correct order. Mine are uh, being 
added to my cursor alphabetically or numerically um, since I have them labeled as page one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. And boom, that's it. I see this right here, this graphics frame that's hanging out at the end. That means that my frames are touching each other just a little bit too much here in the center. Just pull them out, tiny, tiny bit. There we go, no more ghost frame. All right, next we are going to go to File, Export, and we're going to export this whole document as a fixed format EPUB. Let's choose our cover image. We are going to use that, uh, let's use our file name as our navigation. We're going to enable synthetic spreads. Let's let these images come out at full res and see what kind of file size we get. We're gonna do JPEGs because they compress better. We're not gonna worry about the metadata for right now. I do have other videos that talk about ebook metadata, but we're not gonna worry about that for this one. And let's go ahead and click OK. Now let's open up that file in Kindle Previewer 3. As you can see, this is taking quite a long time to convert. This could be a good indicator that we might want to drop the resolution of the images down from 300 to 150 pixels per inch. This is probably going to be a very large file if it is taking so long to load in. Here we go. All right, let's have a look. All right, good. Now we are maintaining the intended form of our text with the proper character styles. And let's check that one page. There we go. Yes, so this was the page that had the um, white box in this area, and now it is displaying correctly. All right, perfect. So now, the only thing left to do to this ebook would be, of course, to properly fill out the metadata. But additionally, if you wanted to add a custom table of contents to this uh, EPUB, you would simply need to open it up in Sigil. So let's do that. So if you're not familiar with it, Sigil is a free open source software that is an EPUB editor. Um, it's very useful. I utilize it almost daily. It's free to download, and I do have another video on that, which you can go watch. All right, here's what our EPUB looks like in Sigil. Now don't freak out if you've never done this before. The only thing you need to worry about for your children's book table of contents is going up to Tools, Table of Contents, Edit Table of Contents. All right, so what do we want in our Table of Contents? I'm going to click Add Above, and let's add the title page. Let's add also the copyright. Let's add the dedication. Let's add the story beginning. And then let's also add about the author. I do not want to maintain this particular entry, so I'm going to delete it. Now, how do we tell Sigil where we would, which page we want to go to? So we have it labeled, but we don't have it targeting anywhere, meaning we don't have it it directed to a particular page. So I'm going to select my target for the title page. Now I know my title page is page one, which in an ebook happens to be container zero. We start at zero in an EPUB, not at one. So for my title page, which I know is technically the first one, I'm going to select zero. I know my copyright is the next one, so that's gonna be one. My dedication is going to be two. My story beginning will be three. And then I know that my author and illustrator page is the last one, which is going to be, I believe, container 39, because yes, that would be page 40. Very good, let's click OK. Now to test this out, we can click um, in our table of contents previewer right here. And then we'll go to preview. Ah, yes, that's correct. Dedication, perfect. Let's go to about the author and illustrator. Very good. All right, now we click save and we'll open again in Kindle Previewer 3. 
for a properly working demo of the table of contents. This file takes so long to convert. If I were actually going to utilize this file, I would most definitely convert it down to 150 pixels per inch as this is taking quite a long time to load in and will and will not enhance the user side of things either. If they have to wait this long for their ebook to load in on their Kindle device or their phone or their tablet, um, they would rather have it be fast and slightly grainy than take as long as this one is taking on. Very good. All right, now we can see our properly working table of contents. And we can see that visually everything looks good. All right, everyone, I hope you found this helpful. This is the best way to get a fixed format EPUB that is worldwide distributable, visually identical to your print version, and is able to utilize synthetic spreads, meaning your pages are side by side. Leave a like, leave a comment below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.